Okay, this is my Ford 9 inch rear, but it's made for a 68 through 72 um, A body chassis. So this is, uh, it has all the, the brackets for the 68 and 72. This is the uh, perch for the coil springs. There's another one over there. And I am going to be putting this together today. And then what I'm going to do, there's the third member over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to videotape uh, putting this together and how I do it. And this is the third member right here. Just want to throw you, the, uh, show you this. It is, those are the gears, 370, uh, 31 spline. And I am uh, going to put this together. And I'm going to show you the axles. These, here are the axles. So I'm prepping them, getting them ready. So I uh, just want to show you that. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll be right back. Here it is. I'm going to bring you down. So you could take a look at it up close. Here it is up close. Um, it's super heavy. So I'm going to put the camera up on the tripod again. And I'm going to put it on the table here. I'm going to put a piece of plywood across. and uh, I'm ready to install the studs in here temporarily. Because I want to make sure they're nice and snug. You don't want to be hammering... Um, with the hammer from underneath like a lot of people do just to set them in place so what I what I do a, an old timer taught me this trick so you got a bunch of washers you don't want to use the nut that it comes with because they're uh, nylon thread on top so you don't want to break that by constantly tightening and taking them off so just put it in put the washers on get yourself the uh, the nut here uh, any particular nut it's too many um, that would fit and then you just put it on there and you just want to make it snug so just uh, get it to the point where you feel it tighten a little bit and then just give it a couple couple cranks to fit it in there and uh, then you can loosen it up. So you are not hitting the rear uh, and cracking the cast aluminum with your hammer. So that's just a little trick um, that I was told years and years ago. So that's in there. It's not 100% because you have to torque them down to 20 foot pounds to start and then once you have everything torqued down to 20 foot-pounds, then you torque it down to uh, 38 to 40. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, play in there that you could, you could do. So I am going to continue doing this. Take some time. So Okay, I installed all the bolts, so now I'm going to just use some of this uh, gasket sealer on the uh, rear, so make sure you get around the bolts. Um, this is how I do it, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of people say you should use RTV sealer. Um, but this, the gasket that they give you is pretty thick here. So I'm using this pretty much as a precaution uh, just to get some extra uh, sealant so it doesn't leak. Um, making sure I'm getting it around the bolts really well. And then once I do that, uh, I'm going to wait a couple minutes, wait for it to get tacky, and then I'm going to install the the gasket so if you have any questions or comments let me know 
get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, everything uh, has a thin coat of the sealer here, the gasket sealer. Um, so now I'm going to put the gasket on. Uh, I'm not going to push it in quite yet because I'm going to wait for it to tack up a little bit. And then once it tacks up, then I'm going to... It's a little cold in my garage today, so it's probably going to take a little more time. So I'm going to give it a minute before I sit this in place. So I'll be back. The gasket's in place. I waited about 10 minutes. Um, it's getting tacky. Like I said, it's cold in my garage, so it's going to take a little bit for it to uh, get sticky. So I wanted to push that down. Um, now, the other thing is, I'm probably going to put a coat on it right here before I put it in. But I, uh, I uh, don't know if I should put it on here. I, I'm going to put it on the third member. So when I'm done doing that, I will uh, get back to you. All right. Okay, I applied a thin coat of the uh, gasket sealer on the third member. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, try to install it on the rear here. Um, this is heavy. It's about, um, if I'm not mistaken, 85 pounds. So I'm by myself. So hopefully I could get it on the first try. Um, if not, we'll do it again. So, but anyway, are we ready? Let's try this. So hopefully I could get it with the first try without messing up the uh, gasket. Come on. The problem is, is I didn't set all the bolts at the right height. So I think it's gonna give me a problem. That looks good. All right, so now I am going to put the uh, nylon uh, threaded nut right here on each bolt, and I'm going to start doing my my torquing down. So the uh, I was told, which I didn't really know this, is that. The way you know it's a 9 inch rear is that you can't get at the bottom bolt with your torque wrench, which I didn't know that. So you could torque everything else except for the bottom, in this particular case it's bottom two, your socket can't fit on there. So you're going to have to use your judgment on um, tightening them down to 40 foot pounds so I am putting these on finger tight for now and I'm going to set up my torque wrench to 20 foot pounds and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that and then uh, we'll go from there be right back uh, my torque wrench set to 20 foot pounds and the way um, I do it, there's a lot of different ways to do it, is I snug it up a little bit and then jump to the other side. That way you don't have a problem um, pinching the gasket. So I'm just using my torque wrench like a regular wrench uh, for now. Okay, you hear that click? I'll try to be quiet.
that's how you know you're set at 20 foot pounds. So if you're if you're wondering, just making sure. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do because I can't get my torque wrench in the back here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my 9 16th wrench and feel approximately how tight that is and I'm going to use the same amount of force back here and that so now I'm going to turn it up to 40 foot pounds and go over everything again and that's that's going to be done so I'll be back uh, when I'm almost done doing that is tightened equally so I don't have a problem once I have my rear all assembled so everything is torqued down so to 40 foot-pounds, I went over everything twice to make sure it's good. So now what I'm going to do, I wanted to show you again, these two bolts back here, you cannot tighten them with the socket, so you're going to have to use your judgment. You need to be careful you don't over tighten it and snap the bolts or uh, crush the gasket. Okay, I, uh, I'm ready to install the axles in the rear differential. I just got done putting in the, uh, the third member. I showed you how to, I did that. Um, I want to show you, when, when you get this, it comes as a kit. So you get the housing and the axles in one order, and then you have to order what type of third member you want. I ordered a 31 spline. 3.7 rear so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil in the seal here just to make sure that it's it doesn't dry out on me because I am going to uh, I am going to have this sit for a little bit before I go ahead and and actually run the car so I don't want any of the seals to uh, dry out so I just put a little bit of oil here and what I want to show you, um, um, anyway, I want to show you the passenger side axle is slightly longer than the driver side axle. So you need to make sure you're installing it correctly or else you'll have a hard time putting it in. I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out, but that should save you some time. The passenger side is longer by two and a half, three inches than the driver side. So, just so you're aware of that. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the seal in there and then I'm going to put the axle in place. So, let me put the seal in and I'm going to show you how I do the axle and I'll be right back. And uh, it's going to take a little bit of finesse. There you go. So that's in. Um, and that's all I'm going to do right now. So what I'm going to do is install the other end. But for now, I'm leaving this the way it is. It's in about a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, I'm going to tap it with a, a piece of wood to get it in all the way. But before I do all that, I want to make sure I put the other one in and set that one properly as well. So, let me back my uh, table up so you can see. Bring it over here. All right. And I'm going to put, again, a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil right here where it sits up against the seal. And that should be fine. Just do that. I just don't want to have a problem. All right, so that's done. Okay, 
and again, put some pressure, uh, keep it up so it doesn't ride on that seal and damage it as much as you can. So, there you go. Now, now I'm going to, like I said, I have to get a piece of wood and, and, and tap it so it goes in. Um, I don't want to hammer it like crazy, so once I get it in, it's going to be uh, seated properly. So it just dropped. So uh, keep some pressure there. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So they have collars, let me show you here. Um, so these collars here go here and you bolt them together so the rear axles don't come out. Um, that axle should be 35 foot pounds. So you're gonna come in through this hole right here. And that way you could tighten it at 35 foot pounds. So I'm going to show you how that's done in a minute, but I'm not ready yet because I want to make sure that this is in enough so I'm not using the seal to push the axle in. So I'll be right back. You have these uh, T bolts right here. These T bolts are for the axle shaft. You install this plate. It comes with it um, and you put that in and then that actually holds the axle in place um, I am gonna install these now and I'm gonna take these back off uh, because if I'm not mistaken the Willwood brake kit the disc brake kit comes with this plate and it's slightly different if I'm not mistaken I could be mistaken um, and and if that's the case I want to use the proper plate for the Willwood brakes. So for now, I'm going to put this in, um, install this, and I'm going to fork it down to 35 foot-pounds. That's what they recommend on the uh, Ford uh, website that I looked it up. If you know anything different, leave a comment. Um, so that being said, um, there's a hole right here, so you just gotta, you just have to turn the, the, uh, hole to where the nut is and then slide that in and that actually, you could take it to 35 foot pounds, but make sure when you do this, you bounce around so you don't twist the plate when you're tightening it. So I just did that a little bit and I'm gonna to go to the other side and do that. All right, that's why I have the rear strapped on the table so it doesn't move on me when I start doing this uh, torquing and moving and pushing, in case you're wondering. All right, uh, let me do this and I'll be back Okay, just wanted to show you up close and personal what it looks like. It's all installed. Um, so there you go. And everything here is in place. Just show you that. Okay, nice and clean. And then I just got done doing this side. That's uh, nice and clean. You got the same situation here. So there you have it. This whole rear is installed. Everything's set. So now the other thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut these perches off and clean that up and paint it. So I'll be back. Okay. I'm ready to cut these perches off with my grinding wheel. 
Um, I wanted to mention, I put the axles in so when I spray paint everything, it comes out, everything's coated. So um, I'm going to paint it uh, black, satin black or semi-gloss black, um, and to match my suspension kit. So I put the rears, the axles in the rear, so I paint this really nice, and I'm going to take everything back apart um, and then put it back together once everything's painted, uh, because I have to take the axles off in order to install the brake system. So that's, a, that's going to be a different video. But uh, for now, I'm going to cut these off, and uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. So give me a second. perch off and I'm gonna save them just in case I ever decide which I probably would not um, maybe if I want to sell it I'll, I'll put it back but I could always weld it back into place but this is the perch right here so I'm gonna cut the other one off and I'm gonna clean it up I'm gonna bring you down here give me a second this is a close-up of it I, I just cut this off and cut this off and I'm gonna grind it and um, smooth it out but here you see I'm gonna save this for future uh, in case I ever decide to put this back or if I sell the car and somebody wants to change the suspension they could reinstall this so uh, there you have it so I'm gonna do the other one it's right over there so I'll be back when I'm ready to clean it up I'm gonna grind this smooth and then I'm gonna start spray painting everything so I'll be back Okay, I'm all done um, grinding everything smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you down here. I'm going to show you exactly what I did. Um, then I'm going to clean up all my stickers and get ready to start painting it. So if you have any questions, let me know, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm going to bring you down here and show you. This is what it looks like up close. I sanded everything smooth. Um, so you don't see when I paint it you don't see any weld marks where the uh, where the perches were so here's the the left one and the right one over here um, and then I got to clean up all these stickers right here so I got to clean these stickers up this is where the uh, the vent was so I didn't want to get any grindings in there uh, even though I'm going to be taking this apart again to install the disc brakes um, so I got to grind all these sti stickers off and I'm going to um, tape off everything that I need to tape off. So uh, then I'm going to get ready to start painting it. I'm going to use a, a self-etching primer first. And then I'm going to paint it uh, black. So I'll be right back when I'm all done. Okay. I'm all done. Wiping down the rear, just got done sanding everything. Um, just make sure it's nice and clean. And what I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to prep it with some uh, etching primer, self etching primer. I'm going to spray everything. Make sure it dries really nicely, and then I'm going to spray paint it black. So if you have any questions, comments, let me know. Um, so I prepped everything with a degreaser, uh, just so you know what I did. And I sanded everything that I didn't like after I degreased it. So there's no gasket sealer in the way. Um, blew it off with my air hose right here. Made sure there's no dust.
Okay, I'm, I'm putting a uh, coat of primer and this is going to take some time. So I just wanted to show you the process of how I'm doing it. I'm going to open uh, my garage door, actually get some air while I'm painting. I just turned off the heat. So I'm um, putting on the last coat of primer before I am done with the primer. I use the whole can on the rear end here. Uh, so once this dries 100%, which is fairly quick, I'm going to put a coat of black paint on here. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. Like I said before, here is a, a picture of the rear up close. It almost looks like military green. Sorry about the lighting. But that's it. It's all ready to go. Primer is drying. And I'm going to turn it back on once it's dry. So just wanted to show you that. Here's a nice shot of it drying. I am going to start giving it a coat of black as soon as it's dry probably another 15 minutes or so 20 minutes i'm all done spray painting the uh, rear now i'm waiting for it to dry you could see in some areas it's really shiny that needs to dry uh, i put two coats of rust oleum on here fast drying i painted it to match my suspension in case you're wondering um if you have any questions or comment, please let me know. And this is going to conclude the video, and I'll see you on the next one. I think the next one I am going to be installing the um, disc brake package from Willwood on the, uh, on the rear. So, just want to show you that. Alright, and if you have any questions or a comment, leave it below, and I'll see you on the next one.